Now I want to talk a little bit more specifically about wheat, gluten, gluten-related illnesses, and wheat-related illnesses. And those may not all be the same. We're going to kind of dive into some of the subtle differences between those. Let's get back to basics. Wheat gluten is a polymer. That means that it's composed of small units that bind together into long sheets and create a chain or thread that then can bind sideways, the, the threads can bind into a sheet. The binding on a chemical level allows for a certain amount of stretching and a certain amount of uh, elasticity. And those are controlled by the components of gluten. So there's gliadin and there's glutenin. Gliadin is alcohol soluble. It's a single molecule. It gives viscosity, elasticity to the dough. Glutenin, actually, we don't know as much about. It seems to be a bunch of different molecules that are all kind of lumped together. It's not soluble in alcohol. That's how, it's, how we got its name. That's how we originally made the distinction is we took a bunch of gluten molecules and dissolved them. And the part that dissolved in alcohol we called gliadin. And uh, the part that didn't we called glutenin. We're still not sure exactly about that glutenin portion. But that, that portion does seem to be responsible for giving the extensibility to the dough. The gliadin is also the part that is associated with celiac disease. So in celiac disease, our bodies, our intestines develop an antibody against the gliadin portion of the gluten molecule and recognize that as an invader and, and generate an immune response to that. One of the more interesting parts of gliadin that's important to know is that gliadin actually can pass through the wall of the intestine hole. So despite it, it, the solubility things we talked about before, one of the problems is even as gluten is broken down, the gliadin molecule doesn't stay, even though it's a relatively big molecule, doesn't necessarily stay in the intestine. It can pass through and generate an immune reaction even outside the intestine. So even if we think of celiac disease typically as being related to bloating or diarrhea or intestinal malabsorption or other GI problems, you can actually have a lot of other manifestations of celiac disease, joint pain or rashes, other things, because the gliadin molecule has exited the intestine. So, as you can see in this slide here, there's a comparison here between what parts of gluten or what parts of wheat are responsible for different wheat-related sensitivities. So for celiac disease, that's the gliadins, as you can see. For Baker's asthma, uh, we're talking about amylase tryptin inhibitors, uh, serpins. For fructose mal malabsorption, it's the fructans. We talked a little bit about that before, the photomap issues. And for non-celiac wheat sensitivity, we talk about the ATIs. And for irritable bowel syndrome, again, we're talking about fructans. So uh, different parts of wheat are causing different syndromes. That's the main takeaway here. And we're going to talk about each individual part here in more detail. But just because a single person doesn't respond well to wheat doesn't mean it is always the gluten. Wheat is composed of a variety of different, th different things, and individuals can have reactions to different non-gluten parts of wheat. So this is specifically related to gluten and, and gliadin, but here is highlighting the reactivity of different individuals to different types of wheat. So as you can see, einkorn has the lowest reactivity, and that's immune reactivity. They did blood-based studies to determine the amount of immune reaction to the gliadin molecules. Emmer has a slightly higher reactivity, Durham is even higher, Spelt is higher, and then heritage, heritage wheat actually refers to modern wheat that is more than 100 years old. Modern wheat actually is after 100 years, so don't be fooled by the term heritage, it's actually not that old, evolutionarily. But you can see here that as we move to more and more modern forms of wheat, the reactivity on an immune level goes up and up. And as I mentioned before, uh, a lot of that is related to the D genome that is encoded by that last uh, hybridization. By contrast, einkorn only has that A genome. So A, B, and D, einkorn only has the A, which doesn't seem to generate that same degree of immune reactivity. So if you measure things like cell growth, immune activation, apoptosis, release of various nitric oxide and various other inflammatory mediators, einkorn doesn't seem to generate those same reactions immunologically. There have been a few studies in actual people. And so in medicine, we always have to be hesitant to 
extrapolate from what we see in a lab or in a test tube to what's going to happen when you actually expose people because something can look great in the lab but then you realize it doesn't work out. The few studies that have been done in actual human beings, however, seem to bear this out. There was a study of about 12 celiac patients who were given a capsule of two and a half grams of rice or two and a half grams of einkorn wheat. And they had similar levels of reactivity. Symptoms remained the same 28 days later, which is unusual for celiac patients if they were exposed to wheat. So that was actually one of the rare randomized control trials to see whether einkorn wheat would generate similar symptomatology as other wheats. Similarly, if you compare emmer and durum, which have the, again, we had einkorn just has AA, emmer and durum and kamut have AABB, and even that is less immunoreactive than modern wheat. If you give that to celiac patients, you have to give five times the dose of emmer wheat compared to modern wheat to create the same damage in the intestine if you do biopsies in celiac patients. So again, it, it's more reactive than einkorn, but it is less reactive than modern wheat by at least a factor of five. It may not be safe for celiac patients because they may still react. The interesting question with einkorn is, is there a fraction of celiac patients who only react to the D variant of gluten? And that was what was shown in that small study of 12 patients, is that even giving them einkorn wheat actually didn't produce symptoms and opens an intriguing possibility for celiac patients, even full-fledged celiac patients, that this may be an option for a certain percentage of them to consume wheat products. Um, the other product that is present in wheat is something called amylase tryptin inhibitors. So amylase is an enzyme in your saliva uh, that breaks down uh, starches, breaks down carbohydrates into sugars. It's why if you take a piece of regular white bread and you chew it long enough, it will suddenly become sweet. Uh, it's because the amylase in your saliva is breaking that down. You also have amylase in your intestine that helps break down those long starches. Interestingly, several wheat varieties encode for proteins that inhibit that amylase. So they prevent it from working. And the idea there is that in the wild, the wheat uh, grain strategy is to get an animal to eat it and poop out the seed so that a new plant can grow. Well, if the seed is damaged in the process, then that doesn't work. And so these wheat grains have actually learned to produce substances that inhibit the digestive enzymes in animals and, and in us. And so those are called amylase trypsin inhibitors, ATIs. And what's interesting is that only the B and D genomes are capable of producing these ATIs. The A genome is not actually capable of producing ATIs. So einkorn wheat does not have any of these substances, only emmer, durum, kamut, and modern wheats, including spelt, are capable of even producing these. And the interesting thing is that these ATIs actually produce a similar inflammatory reaction as what we see in celiac disease. So even though you don't have an antibody to gluten the way you do in celiac disease, these ATIs can produce a similar chain reaction of inflammatory reactions as what you would see in celiac. And so the theory is this may be uh, a partial explanation for non-celiac gluten sensitivity or non-celiac wheat sensitivity. Because these ATIs are present in modern wheat varieties and they produce a similar cascade, you can even get the what we call extra intestinal symptoms. So it's not just the bloating and the diarrhea, but just like celiac, these ATIs can produce rashes and joint pain and all the other non-intestinal symptoms that are present in celiac disease. But when you test for celiac, the test will be negative because there is no antibody uh, to gluten. It's a, different, it's a different mechanism. However, einkorn wheat, being only AA genome, does not actually have ATIs. And again, especially for people that have non-celiac wheat sensitivity, may actually be a viable option. So, a couple of less common conditions. There is something called Baker's asthma, in which inhaled wheat actually produces an asthma-type reaction. That's IgE-mediated. It is a traditional allergy and is irrelevant of any of these gluten or non-gluten or whatever. Einkorn does it as much as everything else. Photomaps also, interestingly, if you have IBS in response to wheat and just intestinal sy symptoms, no brain fog, 
no joint pain, no nothing. It is possible that you just have IBS in response to the oligosaccharides, the photomaps, that are present in wheat and grain as a result of your particular microbiome. And in fact, einkorn wheat has a relatively high percentage of photomaps. And so if that is the patient's issue, einkorn may actually worsen the symptoms. And these kinds of differences actually create the possibility of figuring out wheat sensitivity instead of just a big lump category and separating it out into particular sensitivities, celiac, which is gluten, uh, ATI sensitivity, or photomap sensitivity. And the interesting thing about photomap is that specific targeted prebiotic treatments or probiotic treatments may actually provide the possibility of altering a person's gut flora, gut microbiome, to be compatible with a higher photomap content. So that actually offers a different route to perhaps, uh, possible intervention.